Hi, it's Heather from Thicket It Works, and today I want to share with you the process that I decided on to create these exterior gothic window surrounds for the abandoned boudoir diorama. These surrounds are made from the simplest of materials, so let's get started. Here we're looking at the interior of the diorama back wall. And here is the exterior where our beautiful stained glass gothic windows have been installed. But they're proud of the surface and that looks really unnatural. So today is all about harmonizing them with their background and integrating them more fully into this project. I'll be using ready board, which I get at the local Dollar Tree. This is the foam core board that is super easy to peel the protective paper off of. And it's important to remove it from both sides. Now, once I have an exposed piece of foam, I'm just using finger pressure to transfer the shape of the Gothic window onto the foam. That shape is then traced with a felt tip marker. That'll make it easier to use this pair of dividers to extend that silhouette out about half an inch all the way around. Next, I just use a sharp craft knife and a beat up old cutting mat to trim away the excess foam core. Once I've removed the exterior silhouette, then I turn my attention to cutting away the interior aperture. This is creating a kind of framework that will fit around the existing window. Foam core is delicate, but it's also pretty forgiving. So these can be cut quite tightly and stretched into place. You'll want to cut two of these frameworks for each window that you want to create a surround for. These are going to be doubled up to make a double thickness layer. And I'm using a metal file to carefully and gently create a soft curve on the upper edge. And I'll do this just for the upper portion of each of these frames. I'm also softening the inner edge again just using a metal file now you get the idea these two layers are going to work together okay before they can be properly installed though I need to transfer all of the mortar lines from the existing wall to the exterior wall and for that I'm just using an old gift card to press into the sides of the piece of foamular that forms this wall and transfer those lines from one side to the other. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. Once I know where these lines need to be placed, now I can come back in with a straight edge and incise the horizontal mortar lines across the wall. And once those are in place, I can now press the vertical lines into the wall. Once those mortar lines have been established, a layer of joint compound is being added directly onto the surface of the panel. It's a messy layer and I even go back in and add a little more texture using the flat side of this palette knife. While the joint compound is still fresh and wet, I'm incising the mortar lines using a clay shaper tool. And once this is dried after a couple of hours, I can come back in and sand the surface and neaten up the mortar lines using a metal file. Now we can actually install the window frames. So first is the lower layer, of course, and then the upper layer. 
to create the characteristic grooves on these arched frames. I'm turning to a set of really cheap wood carving tools that I picked up at Harbor Freight. I'm moving really slowly in order to avoid roughing up the surface of the foam. The rounded profile of this tool is helping to create a layer of texture here with very little effort. Once I've laid down that first set of lines, I repeat the process, passing over each of the indentations twice. Because this tool has a rounded contour, it's not suitable for joining up the corner lines. So for that operation, I turn to a basic chisel shape. And that gets the job done just fine. The final phase of constructing these window casings is to create a series of corbels. To do this, I'm layering simple strips of foam core starting with three quarters of an inch wide and then about a half an inch wide and finally approximately an eighth of an inch wide. Once stacked on top of each other, they create a sort of stair step structure. And then once the Fabri-Tac has had a chance to cure, which doesn't take long, I use the same wood carving tool to add a few little detailed shadow lines. And then I soften the edges and do a bit of a round over using metal files and an emery board. Once this piece of trim is completed, I cut it into one inch length segments. I'll be placing three of these under each of the windows, aligning the exterior of the corbel with the vertical line incised into the window casing, and then just doing my best to center the middle one. Once the adhesive has set up, I'm coating everything with heavy white gesso, including the surface of the wall itself. That will give us a good ground on which we can add do-it-yourself coffee stain to begin the process of aging and creating shadowed areas on this piece. This is just the first of what will become many layers over the course of a couple of hours that I spent on painting the window casings and the wall itself. It's a lot of fun to play with the do-it-yourself coffee stain. It's super cheap and it runs into all of the nooks and crannies. I like to use a big fluffy dry brush to help sort of soften the effects that the coffee stain creates. This is easy to do while the material is still wet. Then I come back in with layers of acrylic craft paint in black and cream and brown, all mixed into various shades, sometimes using the coffee stain as the mixing medium and sometimes just regular tap water, depending on the effect that I desire adding lots of shadowing at the upper portion of each of the window frames and reinforcing the shadowing beneath the base of each of the windows and under each of the corbels as well. This is a lot of fun. And the final stage is a dry brushing with a light cream color. Now this wall will receive more aging as we continue with the project but this is a good start and I have to say I really love the way that these gothic window surrounds turned out who would guess that they're made from dollar store foam core I turn to this material again and again for scratch building not only because it's inexpensive but it's so easy to work with and with 
a cutting tool and a little bit of imagination, we can create all kinds of really cool shapes and textures for our dioramas and dollhouses. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this has been useful to you in some way. Until next time, bye.